Hi everyone, welcome to UTA Planetarium's live star stream. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay. I'm sure it's been a hectic week for you. It also has been a hectic week for us, but don't worry, we are still here. Now, I'm actually, my name is Jennifer Jones, and I'm actually an educator here at the Planetarium. Um, I'm also a student assistant, so I'm sort of an all-in-one. And so I'm actually going to be talking to you today about the sky, of course, and also a program called Solarium. Now, just a heads up, we have had issues with some people trying to spam our comments. So if you see this going on in the live stream, please do not click on any links and we will take care of it as soon as we possibly can. And so before we get started, I know 2020 has been hectic for everybody. It's been hectic for me. I'm sure it's been hectic for you and everyone everywhere. And sometimes we just wish to just go off the planet, maybe go to Mars, maybe go somewhere that's not Earth. Well, we can't actually do that. We can try. So I'm going to show you a program today called Stellarium. Now, in the in the planetarium, we usually use something called Digistar. Now, Digistar is a commercial software, so it is not available to use at home. But don't worry, Stellarium is completely free. You can download it off their website, which we'll post a link to later. And so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to teach you a little bit about Stellarium while also doing a sky tour. So let's go ahead and transition over to that. So we'll see here that, well, we can see south, of course, we can see a cardinal point, and we can see a few different things. And so this is actually really going to help us. But first things first, we can't see any stars right now. And so that's not good. So we have to do some stars. And so we're actually going to go ahead and you can see that the time is still counting. So we're at 102 now and we're going forward, but we need to go really forward in time. So we're just gonna go ahead and pause this and then come right over here and you're gonna to wanna to go to what looks like a clock. This is the date and time window. And so I think we should just go to about 10.30 tonight because I'm sure everyone's staying up a little bit later. There you go. And then of course you are going to want to highlight all the seconds. It won't make a big deal, but just for simplicity's sake. And then this is in military time, so we're gonna to go to 2230. Now, when we look at this, we can definitely see a lot of stars, but I'm here to tell you, if you live in the city, you probably can't see this many stars at all. So I wanna go ahead and simulate what it's gonna be like in the city. And so to do that, it's very easy. So once again, go down here, go to the side. We're gonna to go to sky and viewing options and it's gonna be the first one. You'll see something called light pollution. So you'll see it's at a two right now, and usually that's about how it is when you go camping or anything like that. And so we're gonna take it up to about a six. Now cities can really even get up to about a nine, but a six I feel would be perfect to sort of see where we can see things. So if you live in an apartment, you live in suburbs, you should be able to see what we're going to talk about and really in the middle of the city too. And so while we're looking south, we'll go ahead and notice a few things to our left here. You'll see some meteor showers called the Ophiuchids, and you'll also see the moon. Now the moon is very bright, very beautiful today, yesterday, and a few days ago even. And so it's actually a full moon. Now I know I've heard the thing, and on a full moon, everyone acts absolutely crazy. I'm here to tell you that's not actually true. However, there was someone who tried to do some science with it. And so they were like, okay, okay, well, so clearly people are crazy when a full moon comes. So the moon, we know, controls our tides and we know there's water in our brain. So if we connect the two, surely the moon is somehow controlling our brain when there's a full moon. That's completely false. But it actually made up a word that you've probably heard or even said before called lunatic. And so when you hear the word lunatic, you'll notice the word Luna in front of it. And Luna means moon. That is the name of our moon. And so that actually comes from the idea that the full moon controls our thoughts or even has some werewolves, but I'm here to tell you that's not true either. And so we're going to actually go to the right of the moon and you're going to see this red dot right here. Now, a lot of people might say at first glance, that's Mars. Well, it's not Mars. Mars, you can't even see in the evening sky until about October. And so this star is actually, it's a star and it's called 
Antares or Antares, if you speak a little bit like me. And Antares, Antares is just really a romantic name for not Mars. And so they took the time to say, okay, well, it's not Mars, so we're going to call it not Mars. And then just put a cool name in front of it to maybe not know that. And so Antares is really cool. And you'll see that we have a, a little bit of information over here. If you download Stellarium, you are going to have a ton more information. But you can go to the configuration window and make it a little bit more like this. Because it can get a little overwhelming. And so when you're looking at Stellarium, it's pretty interesting that when you have a whole lot of stars on, if you keep clicking around, you're going to just keep clicking stars. And you're not going to be able to see this guy. So if you want to just unclick everything, just right click and then you won't see it again. So we're actually going to do a few different things. First off, I think we should go to the north because I know you've heard of the northern north star. I know that you've heard of a few different things here. So when we go to the north and we'll just go straight up, surely you'll see something a little familiar. And so if we go right over here, we see this line. And this, of course, is called the Big Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's actually something called an asterism. And you'll see there's a little part of that, but we're actually just going to focus on the Big Dipper at the moment. And so an asterism is just like a constellation. It's a drawing in the sky. But it's usually a smaller thing that you can see in a full constellation. And so the full constellation is, of course, much bigger than that, as you'll see here. The constellation is actually called Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. And now we'll talk a little bit about constellations in a little bit, but I want to just continue looking at the Big Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper can actually be used to find the North Star. Now, the Big Dipper, normally you wouldn't be able to see a whole lot of stars in Ursa Major, but the Big Dipper holds seven of the brightest stars we can see in our nighttime sky. So we really will be able to see it. And so we're actually going to look at these two stars here. And when you make a line, we're actually going to go straight to the North Star. And we'll see that right here. And so you'll see that the North Star is actually in the constellation of Ursa Minor or you probably know it as the Little Dipper. Now, the Little Dipper is not easy to see, unfortunately, in your own backyard. Unless you live out in the country, you definitely won't be able to see it. You can see the North Star, and you can see these two stars, but they're really dim when compared to the rest of the sky. See, we'll only see a few of these stars. Now, when we look at the North Star, we're like, okay, why is it so important? Well, let me simulate that for you. So we're going to go forward in time just a little bit. We'll click it around three times or a little more, and you'll see that the sky is starting to move to the left here. But you'll notice that the North Star isn't moving. And so we can always use the North Star as a means of navigation because it won't move in our lifetime. Now, eventually, maybe a few million years later it'll probably move a little bit but there doesn't really move to really where it can see a big difference in ourself and so we have the north star and of course there actually is a southern star but it's it's not even as bright as the north star you can barely see it and so while it doesn't really help for if you get lost in the woods uh, it does help um, scientists and its name is Sigma Octans, so clearly that's a really fun name to say. But the North Star's actual name is Polaris. And so the way I always remember this is that if I had a pole long enough where I could go straight to the star right here, that star will stay in the, at the pole. And so we'll call it Polaris. You can also think of the North Pole too. So all right. So we've done a little star hopping. So star hopping is just this game that we just played where we use stars to find another star and even a constellation. So we're gonna use the Big Dipper once again. And we're going to use it to find a few different things. Now, so we're going to use the Big Dipper. I'll go ahead and put some lines up and we're going to use it to find a star called Arcturus. Now using the handle, we'll notice it's like a curved line. Well, in math, we call a curved line an arc. 
So we're going to arc to the star named Arcturus in the constellation of Boates. Now you'll notice when you get up here, it's going to start moving a little differently. It's not just going up or down or left or right. It's moving in a circle. That's because right here is the zenith. Now zenith, like if you've watched our weekly night sky videos, you'll know it's just really a fancy word for the topmost point in the sky. And that's about it. And so you'll see that we're starting to go in a circle rather than just staying in normal up, down, left, right. And so we know this is the constellation of Boates or the sheep herder or shepherd. And you'll notice right next to him, we have these two little dogs. Now these are called the hunting dogs or Canis Venetici. And you'll notice they're actually going after Ursa Major. So there is a story behind that, but it is a Greek story. So as you can imagine, I probably should not go into that. However, just know that they are hunting dogs and they're going to try to get the bear. And so we'll see in Boates that he has a scythe to get some wheat or anything like that. And he also has a club just in case a wolf comes and tries to herd his sheep. And so from Boates, we can see this here. And of course, there's a lot of different asterisms in Boates. I know I see an ice cream cone and some people see a kite, but we can also see it as a spike. And so we're going to use the idea of a spike to spike to the next star named Spica. So we'll go right down here to Spica. Now Spica is very interesting. So you'll notice here Arcturus, which has a color code here, is actually a red star. And when we go down here, this is actually a blue star. So it's a little bit different. But the cool thing about both these stars is that they're double stars or binary stars. Now we don't have that, of course, in the solar system. We only have the sun. Now the solar system is actually not the normal because Really, almost every system out there has at least a double star, so at least a binary star system, or even a trinary star system, or even up to six stars somehow orbiting each other, and that's actually the common thing. And so we're actually just a little special here. But Spica is located in the constellation of Virgo the Maiden, and I'm sure you've heard of Virgo before, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And so then we can also go right back over to the next constellation, which you might also know. So from here, instead of going to a star, we're going to leap to the constellation of Leo, which is right here. Now, we'll see that there's a tree unfortunately blocking Leo, but no worries. We can just turn off the ground and we'll be able to see it. And so we'll leap over here to Leo, the lion. And to me, his constellation actually looks like a lion. So you can see it sort of looks like a sphinx here. Just sphinx is part lion. And we're actually going to look at this star right here. This is the brightest star in Leo, and its name is Regulus. And the way I really remember this star is that we know a lion is really the most regal of cats. It's usually like the big cat. You know, everyone thinks of a lion when they think of a safari animal. And so... We can think of a regal lion for the, the star name of Regulus. And now right above Leo, unfortunately you can't really see it in the daytime or really in, in the daytime in the city or even in the suburbs or barely even if you're in the country, but just know that right above it is a constellation called Leo Minor. So to me, I always think of this as Mufasa and Simba. And so we know Leo and we know Virgo. Now I'm gonna put the ground on one more time. And we both know that these are two constellations that are part of the Zodiac. And so if we continue over, we'll see some more parts of the Zodiac. And so we can actually see how this looks by turning on planetary orbits, because this is actually called the ecliptic plane. And so the ecliptic plane is basically where all the planets and everything sit. And so it can go a little different, but it's really like Jupiter's not way up here or way down here. It sits along the same plane and same with the moon. And so you can see the moon here and we'll also see that here's Sagittarius, here's Scorpius, 
here's Libra, here's Virgo, here's Leo, and they all follow this line. And so when we come over here, we'll see the constellation of Scorpius. Now Scorpius is rather interesting because let me just turn off the art real quick and let's look at it this way. Now we know it as Scorpius. However, if you've ever seen the movie Moana, you'll also know that this is actually called Maui's Fishhook. And that actually is a constellation that's not really an asterism. It's a constellation in a whole different culture. And if you want to learn about cultures um, with constellations, I can actually show you how to do that at the very end of this video. And so we know it as Scorpius, but of course there's different things in different cultures. And so if we go actually to the next constellation of Libra in ancient Greek culture, Libra didn't even exist. We actually knew it as part of Scorpius. And so when we look at these two stars at the very end of Libra, these are my favorite things to say. The bottom star is called Zubinel Ganubi, or the Southern Claw. And the top star is called Zubinel Shamali, or the Northern, star, Northern Claw. And so those are actually the two big claws of Scorpius in ancient Greek history. So we can do a whole lot of things here, but I want to do one last thing for us. I want us to see what an actual sky looks like. Because of course I have on light pollution and I have on the atmosphere, but like if we were just in the middle of space, how would it look? And so we're going to actually use this button right here and it's called atmosphere. And we can turn it off and really see a night sky. So you'll notice that we can look at the Milky Way right here, and we'll see a whole lot of different stars. So this is what I was saying, that if you keep sort of clicking around, most likely you're just going to keep clicking on a star. But definitely play with this if you can. This is a very fun software to use. Now we're going to go ahead and put the atmosphere back on, but I want to show us all the constellations real quick. So in Western culture, and really what scientists know, you know, and recognize for use of an international standard, really, there's actually 88 constellations. Now, of course, we live in the Northern Hemisphere, so this is really all we see. However, if we turn off the ground here, we can see the Southern Hemisphere's constellations. And so you'll see there's a whole lot of constellations out there. So we see 88. Some of them, of course, look like an actual thing, like a compass here. Some of them are little out there. We can see Gemini, we can see all the zodiac, and a whole lot of other things. And so if you get to this point and you're like, well, there's a whole lot of stuff here and I don't actually know how to get back to it, if you click Control H, there we go, resets the sky. So no big deal there. Now to end this, I told you that you can see a whole lot of different cultures, constellations. And with Stellarium, it allows you to do that. So you don't have to use Google to find anything. You can go to sky and viewing options. We'll go right over here to star lore. And with this, you can see a lot of different things. And so my favorite is actually Egyptian. So give it one second because it has to load all of these up. And then we're going to say show labels, show constellation outlines, and show art. And while some things have art, some things don't, it just depends on what we have. But you can see that right here, here's Scorpius. and the Egyptian culture, it's called Prow. And so it's a little bit different for different things. We have the lion, so we know that Leo is really the same. But then this is Horus, and right here is Virgo, and it's called Selkies. So it's really interesting, and I definitely recommend you trying this out. So that's actually going to conclude our Star Talk for now. So let's go ahead, and if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'll answer to them to the best of my abilities. I do see one question here. It says, is this an app or a program to see the night sky? So you can actually download it from a website that's called Stellarium, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-I-A-I-U-M. 
And so we'll, uh, you'll be able to download it from there. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on just your PC. It's really up to you. I use Stellarium on my PC, and then I use another app called Starwalk uh, when I go outside uh, to look at it through my phone. And so that's really up to you on what you would like to do. But it is completely free. You can download it straight off the front page of the website. And we will post the link in the comments. We have posted the link in the comments. Someone said, do we need to set up a login and provide credit card info? No, you do not, not at all. It is completely free. I definitely didn't do that. I didn't have to make a login with Facebook or anything. You can do it just whenever you want to. You don't have to pay for anything. So it's completely free. I would not have it if it was not free. All right. If there's no more questions, then we are going to go ahead and end here. If you end up having questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments so we can answer later. Now, I'm sure you noticed if you were at the last live stream and you asked a question about a black hole, we have not responded yet. I promise we are getting there. We actually have a little surprise in the upcoming future. And so we'll actually have a pretty interesting star stream in the future about black holes where we'll answer all of your questions about them because I know that they're really interesting. So please hold on and we've got it. And also next Tuesday, if you've heard about this thing on social media that people are calling a fireball, we are actually going to be talking about that with our planetarium director, Levent Gurdemir. And if there's nothing else, then I'm so happy to have been doing this today for you. If you have any questions, once again, please let us know. Message us if you don't want to post it on the comments. And safe skies. See you later.